Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started on this thing again. Uh, we'll try and have a little bit of a public comment at the end of it. But, uh, I, I, we're hoping that we're close. We're done. Yeah. So let's go over the two or three little changes that were in the, the regulations. I think that should take us four minutes. I think, yeah. So do you want to start with page one and go through or just go straight to... What did that on page two? There was Nancy is researching. What it was else? Yeah, that? That uh, she's never actually got back with me. She's too late. Um, yeah, it was basically to see if they had any rules about clearing away old junk. Yep. And she never actually got back to me with that. So I can just take that out and we'll just not worry about it. Um, there's a typo on six too. On six. Okay, I just want to make sure that, that and I'm cool with it. Five B. I, I didn't say that. Right. Okay. Sixteen five B. Okay. That was. Uh, was an extra couple of in there. Yeah, and I'm I'm comfortable with it. If everybody else. Is. This is the language, yeah, that Rick gave me. Yeah. Um, okay. Extra code. You are with that. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll check it for extra. Oh, there are two comments after yeah, the hearing yeah. process. Come, come. Well, I do have, have one question about that. Did you decide we're going to just call it open pits instead of open water storage pits? The title of the paper. Oh, I thought it went the other way. I thought it said open pits and then. I mean, I'm tired. Call it whatever you want. Well, 
basically you need to either do one or the other because one, the title says open water storage pitch and then the next line it says use of open pitch. Oh, so make it consistent, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So what do you think? Yeah, so the other one is there is a reference to this on page six of the water storage distribution systems. The over counter is the best water factor. Is that cutting the slides? No, I don't know if it's the red water. So we should tie those two together. We know two different things. Well, but this just says open water storage pits, so it doesn't distinguish between fresh water pits. Yeah, we'll go back to page 16. 16? 16 under 5B. Oh, I got that. Storage pits, yeah. yeah. So what, since we have made a distinction between the uh, discharge and the flow back pits, then we need to... So what do you want to say then? Open, uh, open, flow back pits? Okay, here we have a number on 626, on uh, one... That's the mine. Yeah. So the fresh water storage and distribution system. Freshwater storage and distribution systems. But this doesn't have to do with fresh water. This one is specific to um, produced and flow back water. So it needs to be different. Well, if that's true, then the title ought to be open storage pit, not necessarily water. Yeah. I go for open storage. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, as long as everybody can distinguish what we're talking about. Well, it's not, well, when you say open storage pit, does that make clear? Oh, yeah, we've done that. We just pulled out the Yeah, because you thought I prefer to be called Mary. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> That'll take a little explaining. That's explaining. <laughs> All right, 17. Everybody's cool with 17. Now, um, I was going to tell you guys, I added. A bunch of definitions at the suggestion of Bob Ward. Um, and actually, as I look at other jurisdictions' regulations, we could add a lot more. And I don't think that you can ever have too many definitions. My, not all except the there's definitions. Except are there's, there's, water, there's definitions like acre feet of water, but we never talk about acre feet of water in the new. Well, we don't. We don't talk about it, but I think the idea was that. Um, the public might not know what that is, and in discussions about a well, we might talk about how much water it takes. Well, but, but normally with definitions in our regulation like this, you're just defining terms that you actually use. Mm -hmm. Is that open storage pit going to be in the definition? Mm -hmm. Should we just talk about it? Probably not a bad idea, but... About where you have it's, it, it's confusing. Mm -hmm. More familiar? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no reason to have stuff, you're not. Yeah, well, there's like acre feet of water at the Lorem tax. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, you know. Uh, we can take them out. I just add them. Uh, I don't mind having them because it's like a dictionary. You don't have to read all the words. Yeah, yeah but, but I mean, that's not really as a matter of drafting. When you draft a statute or an ordinance, you know, you have a definition section. And it refers you, to you, stuff. You define the stuff you actually have. You're, you're not defining yeah. it. Just words. But in some cases, it's like produced water from, well, definitional water. But from all, there's another definitional water here. Flow back. I don't know whether they even use those terms in the regulation, but it's good to have it because flow back has got a definition. Okay. Think, oh, I'm not, I'm not disputing some I of think flow back, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah from that. Is produced water used in the regulation? Yes. Yeah. In fact, we just talked about it, that I, the open pit talks about produce and, and flow back. Yeah, water. yeah. No, so, but but I, I would just say, my preference would be to see, um, take out the stuff that we're not actually using. Well, I, I have no problem with that. And I, and I do agree with putting the open storage pits since we're using that precise. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. All right, so you want to take yeah. out acre feet, take out that alarm, what else? What else isn't used? <laughs> Um, Christmas tree we don't use, but it's a common term. Yeah, it's not part of the rest. So, um, so it's up to you guys. We get in and take it out. My preference would be if we don't talk about it, it's gone. 
if we talk about it, then it must be there. Okay, let's leave it that then and I'll fix it. I can fix that. Okay, so that's that. And yay. So then the MOU. See, here's another one, play. We don't talk about play. And I know what a play is. Okay, I'll go through and anything we don't yeah. use in the regs, I'll pull out. We've got a typo on produce order on page 20. That was 7 guys. It's 20. Page 20. Where? First line, 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 first first line, 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 Um, all right, I think and, we'll and you know, if you notice stuff like that, please email me because you know I'm about like four billion time I read through these. So I'm not even seeing it any more. What I what I'd like to say congratulations to all of us. We got I think the regs are ready to go. Mm -hmm. Is that consensus? Now, just to let you know, before we move on to the MOU, <laughs> which hopefully will go just as easily, um, I'm going to submit this to the county attorney. In fact, I already have. Um, along with the Attorney General's comments. Um, and I did that for a couple reasons. The main one is because of the issues they're having with the um, special districts. I want to make sure we're all on the same page we come up to the last minute and have an issue. So we can expect probably some comments from him, but I don't really expect any material changes. But I am going to submit I have some notes. Sure do. I think that's wise. So that's that. All right, on the MOU, yeah, we've got the addition of uh, the, the note at the top of the page there, which gives me some comfort. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can move that here. Okay, I don't have anything else on page one. You know, we didn't have to change anything. I know. That's in right. this document. All we did was take out strike throughs and make everything same color. <laughs> So unless you caught something, you catch last time. Yeah, I got one little comment, and I'm not going to fight too hard about it. It's uh, going to uh, item one on page six. Hey, Pete. Yeah. Do you have a copy? Yeah. And uh, okay, can I pass up the B&Bs? Yes. Yeah. And I did the main. Okay. And it's just that this water thing it continues to trouble me, and that. Uh, oh, water bottle. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind, I understand what we're trying to do there, but there's whole sections uh, that, uh, let me back up. Maybe what we need to do is define what water body is a little bit better. That I think we be said that about 50 times. Yeah. Have we tried to define it? No? See, I, and I don't mind the way it is if we put in a caveat for containment. Well, what, what I mean is, is if it's a thousand feet away from a, a, a farmer's stock pond, but it's on the other side of the hill. Well, well now keep in mind, we, we do have provisions in the regs yeah. for modifying this for some Yeah, I understand. I understand. So, and so, and if, so, if you feel like that, that handle would like I said, I don't know if I do so. Well, the only reason is... And, and we specifically mentioned topography first. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. And we only use a template. Yes, I agree with all that. <coughs> I just want to make sure we have an understanding that there's literally many sections of land out there, even other than the rural parts of the county, where if, if we don't understand the intent of this, that there, there, there's no global location. You know, I agree. I think I don't think that we need to put something in the MOU. What we need is a definition. And we keep talking about this, but we have, it's hard to come up with one. It is hard to come up with yeah. one. Yeah. Um, it's a, tree, it's a moving target also. Well, you know, yeah, excluding but, things like stock ponds and, you know, small catch basins and that kind of stuff. But how do you put that into words and set parameters on so it? Exactly. So why not leave it as it is? That's exactly, that's my point. We, we can't describe it because your stock ponds can be, can be there now in spring and not be there at the end of August, too. I mean, it's going to be fed. So well, but that, yeah, the, so we're starting what I've got. The solution to me is contained. If, if you're going to be closer than that prescribed distance, I don't mind having prescribed distance in there. Long would we have a caveat in there that if 
there is a containment, a containment mitigation aside from that, then we can mitigate that. But, but again, well, we're, we're saying the same things yeah. over and over again. Yeah, I think we've dealt with that in the rest. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I'm not comfortable that I accept. <coughs> okay. We'll get over that. No, you're not used to that. Right? Now, uh, on uh, item six on page seven, we still don't have that quite right, and I think I gave you those words, so... You did. Yeah, so... Uh, Look at you! What do you mean? Give me these words and then correct me. Well... No, I hate to say this. No, that's not right. What's your right? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't sleep well. <laughs> uh, the intent here is that uh, we want to have the vapor recovery units on there as soon as we can get them there. Right. And as soon as there's a pipeline there. Uh, and if you don't do that, then there's the, then they have to install a high efficiency burner, cool all of that. But I, what I, would, after that burner, well, I'd like to add something that would say which will be utilized until sufficient volumes of vapor are present to justify installation of such facility. So, so you're. What I'm saying is, is I'm that the, the, the thing that they might just put this uh, burner in and then just assume that that's okay forever. Yeah, what I want to do is say that there, there's two hurdles. One is there has to be a pipeline there, so we got a place to take it. And two, there's got to be sufficient qualities to just uh, quantities mm -hmm. to, to justify its uh, uh, installment. And if there is sufficient quantities, even if you got the burner there, you have to install. It. Yeah. Okay, so until yeah. such time as. Well, uh, these things cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Six. So there has to be a, enough Six. volume of vapors to collect, to pay it out in a five year period. Oh, yeah. that's that's a good. Good. How do you quantify How do we the vapor? Though? That's a good, that's a good point. Well, the, these things are designed for volume. Yeah. But I mean, if it's a regulation, then it almost begs that you have some kind of number there that when it passes that number, that, that it's regulatory required that they have the volumes. And, and how do we know that? Oh. Well, how do you know anything? You don't go up there and check anything. They're, uh, when they, they're expected. Uh, how do I know you don't speak in your car? Uh, Grant, yeah, but, but here's the thing. Um, uh, again, it's not a big deal. I know, I know. I, I, get, I get what you're saying, but I think the assumption made here was that as soon as it is economically beneficial, they're going to do that because they're just burning money. Those if burners are just If you want to put that in there, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I was going to say, if you just tap that, exactly. If, if you, 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 you put that in there, I'm cool with that. Then, then that kind okay. of speaks to both sides, which says what? It says... Yes. Give me your language and then I'll modify it. Okay, I just put a comma after burner. Yeah. Which will be utilized until sufficient volumes of vapor are present to justify install installation of required infrastructure or facilities, whichever one you provide. Volumes of... I guess so, because the intent is not to... It doesn't do away with the burner. Well, the intent is no, no, no. The transition isn't a permanent yeah. thing. They go to the burner, they're going to spill half at some point in time, yes. And, you know, okay. you know rather than say not available, Grant, would be better to say if gathering lines are... Uh, if there are no gathering lines within a half mile. In other words, use the same language you use. Well, here's, here's the, the reason I chose the words like I did is what happens if the well only makes three barrels of oil a day and two teaspoons of gas? You know, th there's nobody's going to run a pipeline to pick that gas up. Well, it's not that the lines aren't available then, they're not practical. Yes, okay, th that's fine. Okay. That was the reason why I chose the huh? words the way I did. I'd leave it alone. Leave it alone? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, I'm going to turn it out there. there. If they are, if when they're there, you will install vapor and, and if there's a sufficient volume, uh, I, I guarantee every you know, the world wants to get that gas pipeline in there. Well, well yeah, if they're just, burning much. I think yeah. Karen was originally said it, if you can remember what you said there, that I think that's in the I probably can't, but I'll come up with something. Well, here's what I, again, what I said is, which will be utilized until sufficient volumes of vapor are present to justify installment, installation of Required infrastructure or facilities, whichever way you want to be. Sure. Okay, I got enough. I've figured it out. Required collection facilities. Pardon me? Required collection facilities. Yeah, collection facilities will work. 
really all it is is a, a funnel at the top and a little compressor that forces it. Uh, I got one little comment on page 8 that I thought we picked before, maybe we hadn't. Is on number 10, the second last line, I put a period after systems and you strike when determined feasible. And that's it for my comments. Anybody else? Pete, you got anything for us? Usually I have a gem or two. I'll try some of the water well testing one here. Say again? The water well testing. I'm not sure where that was. Yeah. That was seven? Yeah. Seven on DMP? Yeah, yeah. So I handed out yeah. some language last week before we left. I don't know if you had a chance to look that over or something. Yeah, it says. What? Did I get it? Right. If it looked like that, I didn't get it. Oh, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. So, maybe you want to make a copy? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> What, what I was trying to do, to, one was take out the um, post drilling. I was looking at trying to stay a little more consistent with what the, uh, what the state language had for their, for their area, for their mm -hmm. extent, because what we're changing here versus the state regulations, they require four samples. We're sending up to sample all the wells within that area. So I thought we'd have a more defensible position if we were Asking for the same time frame. At least consistent yeah. with that depth. I put, okay. one, I put one extra sample at a 10 year point. The state only requires it at five years out. So there's one extra sample point in there for a long term. Uh, picking up that. And I took out the post drilling because that didn't make sense to me. So uh, yeah, post drilling doesn't make any sense at all. Right. So I took that out here. So, so there's a, just a little bit of rewording going on. Um, so go take a look at that and see if that's something people are comfortable with, if you want to change that, or how they do it. My name is uh, This is fine. Can you email that language to me? Oh, oh, did everybody get a chance to see it? Rick, did you see it? Do you want to see it? I don't know, I missed it, I didn't know. Okay. Okay. Okay, anything else, Pete? No, that's it. Anybody else? That's good. Okay. Uh, yay! Let's have a party! Woo! Uh, oh, I know this was a very short meeting. We're yeah, going to make a yeah. couple of comments short tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I had a couple of other things I wanted to okay. talk about real quick. I handed out some um, documents that were pretty interesting, I thought. This the schedule comparison, did you guys get that? No. Oh, okay, here, they're all here. Oh. I thought I handed them out, I didn't mention them. Um, I did it about a year ago to all the counties that at that time had uh, had uh, oil and gas regulations. And, um, and then Arapahoe just finished with their fee schedule. Wow, what a difference. Um, so that was kind of interesting, and that's one of the things I want to get done before we go to hearing the fee schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to put it out there if anybody's interested in helping with that. That that would be great. Okay. Okay. Let's make us understand this thing first. Uh, well, I don't know if we're going to do it this way. I was just trying to pick in like how much things have changed. So I've got this page, and then what's this? Uh, okay, so this one is a fee comparison I did a year ago, right? And it has fees, everything from $500 to $3,000, OK? Mm -hmm. This one I got from Arapahoe just this week. Which and one? this, yeah. yeah, this one. And this is their current proposed fee schedule. And it's like $17,000. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I like we took a giant leap here. And uh, so, so my point, I guess, is that you know there's a lot of information between these two documents. It seems to me, you know, we don't need to worry about <laughs> <laughs> Well the other thing that Arapaho
who is doing that, I kind of wanted to, to put out there uh, again for us to think about. We at one time talked about the impact fees. Do you guys remember talking about yes. that? Mm -hmm. And um, Arapaho is actually looking at that. And no, this is Arapaho. Is this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's Arapaho. They're actually looking at that. And the reason behind it is that um, a road operations and maintenance agreement will keep our roads exactly the way they are. So, yeah, so, well, because, because they only have to keep them maintained. So what, what Rio Grande did um, was they, instead of doing that, they just did an impact fee study, came up with a, a number from that impact fee study that they charge per well, and that's how they handle roads. And, and the positive side to that, right, is that we have cash money to improve roads. The downside to that is that once you do that, you're done. You can't go back to them and ask them for more money. So there's an upside and a, and a downside to both of those. The other thing is, and uh, I think you guys already have heard this, but I'll reiterate it, is where this came from was a very unique situation. So um, while they've had it vetted from a legal perspective, I'm, I'm not certain that it is an across-the-board thing. Their circumstance is that they only have one road in and out of their county. Therefore, their concern was a catastrophic failure of that road. And so they did went the impact fee route because they wanted to make the improvements and the repairs to that road that it needed to keep that from happening. So that's, that was a very unique circumstance that caused them to do that. Um, however, like I say, other, other counties are looking at it. There is an impact fee statute apply to this kind of development? You mean when we already have them? That's all, that's all residential development. No, 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 the state statute that you know, limits when you can use impact fees. And, well, and does that apply to this? Um, as, I, as I said, it's been vetted by their attorneys. So I'm assuming that they have done that analysis. However, their circumstance is unique. I mean, just because, I mean, they might be, I guess what I'm trying to say, and I'm not, you know, I don't know anything about legal stuff, but they might be able to make a case for that community because of its unique circumstances. Whether or not that would hold up across the board, I don't know. Let's, could, can we go through this line by line and just so I make sure I sure. understand what it is? Which one? Uh, the Arapaho one. Okay. This, the, this fits more with how I envision it anyway. So what's the USR? That's a special use. So it's just special like ours, use. where it's they've got a regular special use. We pretty much stole our process from them and then improved it. So the <laughs> so the administrative uh, I guess that's administrative process. Administrative process is just like our administrative process. That would be the MOU. Right. The MOU. Right. Okay. The planning process fee. That's when when they start activity. They write you a check for two. That's grand. the application fee. Okay. When they apply for a permit. So that, that, that's their application fee. Right. Okay. And what's Tri-County? Tri-County is their health department, and their health department has a, a flat review freight fee. We don't collect those types of fees for other departments and so forth. But um, do, we, but and do we ask the, our uh, health department to we, be we part of the process? We haven't discussed it. No. Uh, okay. That's not part of what we proposed. Okay. Um, but we certainly, obviously, we could, but it, it, it could be a referral. That's the thing, is they could easily be a referral in the special use process. Well, but that, even if they the were... We've got water quality tests flowing back to the county. Where are those going to go? Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. They're going to go to the uh, environmental. So that's, that's why we're just starting on this whole fee thing to look at. This is pretty comprehensive. It was really helpful to me because I felt there's a lot of stuff in here I didn't think of. That's one of them. Yeah. Okay, the engineering process fee, is that uh, what you'd be using the independent? Uh, right, that's what we would put in the escrow account for inertia's review since we don't have an engineer. And would, that would be a floating number depending on how much work they did or would it be a fixed number? Well, we try to have a fixed number. Um, would that cover most of the work that would be done by? Uh, um, I uh, am supposed to sit down with Sean probably tomorrow and go over this and determine whether or not that's in line with what he would estimate. 
But he, off the top of his head, he said he thought it was. About a week of time. And that's what they, you know, that's what they said. dollars will take for a week of time. No, 5000 Well, there's, the, 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 there's. Right, I know. But the simple one is, we probably talk to 20, 24 hours. Okay. The administrative one, I'm sure, is assuming that some of those documents are the same as they've already reviewed. Okay, what is GESC? That's grading and erosion soils control. So that's... Wouldn't that be part of the engineering process? Or? No, in our, in our process it would be. In theirs it must be a separate department. Well, so, you know, like Rapco probably has a lot of in-house stuff they do. Exactly. They don't have to farm it out, right. so they may get it done for less. Which, which I was really thrilled to see that they broke it all out here. Because they, all these departments are internal to them. They're not outside contractors. No, I like this idea of the building permit fee. But the question I have for you is on what, how much does it cost to buy a building permit for a barn or a house or something like that? It's based on the square footage, but I don't know what the numbers are. Is it a are. percentage of? No, it's based on uh, 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 so many dollars per square foot. That something, something like that. I, I, I don't. That's the top of the head on it. Yeah, I don't really figure, es estimate fees for him. He does all that. But my understanding is it's done on by square footage and it depends on what kind of permit it is, X amount of permit. What is there for a building fee from well, our standpoint? Um, they're, they based it on a six tank a minor facility. battery, on a, yeah, basically a, a minor facility. Um, so you're gonna have you know, concrete pads. But there's a, have. there's appears to be based on value. Yeah. Valuation of 500K for a six tank battery. Or approximately Can you build four, a six or two thousand battery with the separator and your treater and everything for half a million for half a million dollars. A lot less. <laughs> Can you? Oh yeah, I can go five. Of course he's gonna say it. Oh, a dollar buck twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not even suggesting we necessarily take these numbers. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just trying to understand saying, the, the logic of it because right. uh, there should be a building permit fee. Uh, I have no. But uh, uh, every time I've tried to ask somebody, how do you calculate it, I, uh, I get fuzz, uh, or at least well, I hear fuzz. maybe we need to get Ed to brief us on that. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Ed, why would Ed do that? Watkins. He's the building inspector. Building inspector. Oh. For not Ed, um, not Ed. Not Ed, 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 Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. But uh, to me, uh, uh, we're either going to have to standardize it as a, uh, as a number, mm -hmm. or we're going to have to do it on some kind of a cost estimate. And the problem with a cost estimate in the oil industry is you never know if people are going to use new equipment or old equipment yeah. or... Uh, well, I can find out where they got those numbers, how they derived those But numbers. I don't have any problem if we uh, have a fixed fee for something that has a footprint, say a half acre done. Mm -hmm. And then if it's much bigger than that, then I, I, I'm trying to do the math in my head, do you do it as a ratio <coughs> or something like that? $8 per half acre. Because for example, if you go up to, to Well County there, you a well production facility probably covers about a half acre. Where th uh, excluding the wellhead, but just where you have the tanks and your separator and your treater, it may be a little pumping station. Whereas if you go across the road, and this is where I'm gonna ask the question a little differently in a second, is if you go across the road where they have a tank farm, which has got 20 or 30 huge tanks that is uh, there where they truck the oil into it and then they put it in pipelines and things like that. I don't know, it's probably about, I don't know, three, four, five acres. But the whole point is that I'm trying to get to is we're comparing a half a million dollars perhaps to $25 million, and so uh, the, the, the building permit fee should have some relationship to, well, well, to one of two things, either the surface acres that are, or surface lands that are disturbed, or to the value of, and that was the reason why I asked about the housing, I mean, it sounds like they had to do it on just the square footage. Yeah, that sounds, because then you don't have to dispute some of valuation. Yeah. yeah. Because that yeah. yeah. the same yeah. square footage in one part of the county, right. Right. twice or three times as much, just a couple of And you know, the thing is, a building permit fee, if you do it on a uh, disturbed lands basis, becomes insignificant the larger the 
facility becomes, for example, if you've got $20 million in a, what I call a tank farm and all of the, the handling facilities that only covers four acres, or you have a half a million dollars in something that covers a half, a million, half an acre, there, there's this kind of a racial problem there that I haven't quite reasoned through. Sounds but like one, should be, one should be more expensive than the other, for sure. Sounds like Grant wants to be on a lower group that works on the fees. Well, look, I, I've, I've told everybody here from the start that if we have fees that are cumulative of around $15 million, $15,000, I meant to say. No, you use $15 million. I like $15 million. Yeah, well, then, we're, then we'll have a court case. <laughs> uh, about $15,000, and how we break it up uh, is almost not as relevant as that there's a certain toler tolerance level. Yeah, and uh, if you get ridiculously above that, you're going to be, it's going to, there's going to be pushback. If, if we get ridiculously below that, we're just seeing the suckers. So, you know, so this, somewhere in that $15,000 range, all in, I don't have any problem with it at all. Probably. Well, and they're in that range. They're they are. No, that's the one thing I noticed right away is that, that yeah. that's about where I expected them to be. The other thing they did is they did, and JB be in our, where is JB be interested in this, is they did verticals separate from horizontals, and the verticals are less expensive. Why? Because um, the, 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 in their, their verbiage here, they say it takes up less room. Well, that's Five to three acres on the horizontal compared to right. half an acre on the vertical. Well, okay, but, that's yeah, but, but this doesn't deal with uh, <clears throat> this doesn't deal with nature, though. No, in fact, that was what I was going to say. Is you know, th we can ask them a lot of questions, and these are all good questions that I will ask her and, and kind of try to get some deal for where they're going with this. But they don't deal with majors and minors here. All of these did. All yeah. of these. That's how they organized it. They split it into majors and minors. Well, the minors, I think, is, is because when we, if we get to these bigger areas, then, then it goes to a major, and maybe that's what, that's probably the best way to do it, is to split it between majors and minors. Or the minors is just, just straight area. Why not have any minors? <clears throat> but the idea that a, a completed facility between a vertical well and a horizontal well is different in the amount of permanent lands disturbed, there is no difference. Well, in, la in land use, we frequently do a combination of the two because a certain amount of the cost of processing this is, is really no different than processing a land use application, the administrative costs. Sure. They're always the same, no matter whether it's a half an acre or it's five acres, certain costs are going to remain the same. So in land use applications, we frequently have a combination of a base rate that covers that stuff and then a per acre rate because obviously if you're looking at a... a 20 lot subdivision versus a thousand lot subdivision, right? It's a lot, a lot of it will be the same. You're going to be reviewing the same stuff, but there's a lot more of it. Mm -hmm. So it might be, we might want to do something yeah. like that when we do a combination. Going back to the, the question of vertical versus horizontal, the only time that the, the disturbance is greater is during the actual drilling and completion process. After all of that's done, the size of the six tanks, if, that, if that's what it takes, for the vertical well, it covers exactly the same area as the six tanks. Do you know what the rationale was, JB? Were you in on that? They just proposed that. We didn't have a lot of discussions. Um, it is does have to do with the scope of the facility. Um, I will tell you that a small company like Renegade can build a six tank farm for 10% of the price that Conoco Phillips does. You should see one of their locations. It's unbelievable. They purposely <laughs> more space than they need to. Okay. Uh, they use all new equipment. Um, okay. You know. Well, then maybe, you know, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll find out more information about it. I mostly just wanted to kind of introduce to you how much space there is between where we were and where we are. One thing, is this per pad or per well? We were talking about how, you know, you might start with a pad and you've got three or four wells and sometime they're all coming off the same pad. Good so. question. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we, should, we would be foolish if we're charging fees per pad and we have one well and then all of a sudden we've got three, four, or five wells coming off the same pad and we're not getting anything off. Because for me, as a layperson here, I mean, the first thing I would look at is what's our upfront needs in the county. Because, you know, even, even at 15000 per, 
when we're first getting into us, I don't think that's going to cover our cost of what this might cost us up front. You know, if, if we have to put it on another maintainer just to deal with the damages being done to roads, and 15000 is going to do a down payment. You're talking about 150000 Is the concept before. still to just maintain roads or to improve? Well, you know, if we're going to do this, I would think that it's in the best interest of the county, and Darren, I keep bringing that up, but it's in the best interest of the county if we can get some forward progress. So why would we do this? I think, I think just maintain our rugged road roads and no parks and, and improve them. Not just maintain no them. we got a lot of bad roads. We don't want to maintain yeah. bad roads. Well, that's why I brought up the idea of the impact fees, because that's I one do. way that some communities are dealing with that. They said, ah, to heck with maintaining them. Let's just get the money, you know, uh, suck it up until we have enough. I think I, I could see doing both impact fees up front and then have an ongoing maintenance fee mm -hmm. to go on top of that because they could, they could say, well, some communities do do that. In fact, no, I don't know about the transportation business. And so yes. the, the, the thing is that if you uh, impact fees tend to get absorbed into other areas the way county does stuff, you know, we can have. We can have a 1% sales tax, but not all those 1% goes to where it was originally supposed to go as granted. So anytime you said money is fungible. So, and it is. So if we have upfront up impact fees, and then we have an ongoing maintenance fee, then at least we have something there in reserve for if the road does get messed up, we have to go in and do major rebuilds on it or major mm -hmm. impacts. Route County does that. Yeah. They so have a mitigation fee, but it's for monitoring. Circling back to the question of differentiating between vertical wells and horizontal wells, if you go through their permitting fees and building fees, they're the same for both the vertical well and the horizontal well. Mm -hmm. So I guess on evaluation, that's what they're doing this year. What do you mean? As far as the vertical and horizontal, they have the same valuation. Yes, that's what they been saying. So they just have the same fees because they show the same. Evaluation. Well, it looks to me like the big difference is really in the engineering phase. Maybe it, there is less to reviewing a vertical than a horizontal. I, I tend to agree with Graham. I think minor and major facilities makes more sense than a flat fee for one or the other, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. Because the area ratios, I mean, if you if we require them to make Put it behind a berm. Well, the thing, yeah, the thing just is, the if you develop a horizontal well, after you complete it, same it's still the same, same the Christmas tree right. after the, the thing there. Right. And uh, even on mm -hmm. your valuation here, they're using the same valuations for the surface facilities, either or. Well, that's what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to put together a small committee. That, that would work on fees, if, if you guys are still wanting to help. I understand year. if you want to run for bail, believe me. Is it going to take another year? No. <laughs> we, have to, <laughs> we have to be ready by the planning commissioner. I, I want to take this. I, I think what we need to do, or what I would suggest we do, is identify all the feeable events, right. so, including seismic permits right. and things like that. Anytime that the word permit is used in here, there should be a fee attached to it. Well, and we have some more fees in our regs that we need to include here. Right. Like well, size of testing that's, and that's refracturing. Exactly, that's and exactly what I, the point I was right. making. So what, what I think what you have to do is you have to go through and make a list of the, what, I, what I call feeable feeable yeah. events. And then, uh, then using this as perhaps a, a, a one guy, and then just assign a value for each one of those. Yeah, based on a basis, like hours. Hours or, or uh, cost. impact, Depends. irritation, yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever you want. want. Right. Well, I want to go back and see what these guys are doing now, anyway, because mm -hmm. it's been a year. Oh, you should research. And I want to yeah. see what these guys are up to. Well, which the one, one, that's that's one, is, the one that's season. missing here that I'd like but to see. But you think have something? A, we need to have something jumping off point. The other thing that's really important here is we have to be able to defend these fees. And right. since we can't afford to hire somebody to do a study, the only way we can do that is by using a comparative analysis. Mm -hmm. Now, why have you avoided Wealth County? Because Wealth County, they don't really do um, like a land use application fee. Wealth County, they say they don't have any regulations or fees, but really, as you start talking to them, they got a gazillion of them. But they're all over the place. They're, they're here, there, they're everywhere. That's why I didn't do them, because they're so different from how everybody else is doing it that it was sort of an outlier. Well, but, but, 
but my, I, I still ask the question is they may be help us identify feeable events. Oh, yeah, they've been wonderful for that. And <laughs> yeah, because they are feet. <laughs> well, what I did when I talked to them originally is I, I kind of made, which I should do again, I made some phone calls to find out whether the fees that they're charging are things that we're already charging, and, and they are. Um, I've heard that they have a maybe not as different much departments as that each have. They do. They have a It's kind of like an Italian um, bureaucracy. You have to five dinars and you get a stamp. And you go to the next guy. Right. Five dinars and you get a stamp. <laughs> and that's how it is. It's, they're funny because you know they say, oh, we don't have any rags, we don't charge fees. But when you really start digging, it's, that's not true. They have all kinds of regulations. They're just yeah, attached to permits. I think, that, again, you know, I've said this before, I know I'll say it again. We need to make sure that there are impact fees for schools, roads, sheriff, animal control, fire, yeah. ambulance, right. social services. We need to make sure those other issues that are going to impact communities in a very real way. You don't have to look far for example. They need to be captured as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Well, and that's the beauty. If we decide to go, the impact fees are, I mean, I think we have to do this for now. But if we think that the impact fees is a good idea, you know, that's something that we can, we can do ongoing. Have to come up with the money for a study because they're the ones. I don't know how you come up with those numbers and be able to justify them well, that's cool. without well, a study. We charge fourteen hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars for every uh, developed lot. But that's based on impact study. We did it. We paid for an impact well, study. Don't we share a lot with these other counties, especially some of the outlying counties? Don't we share a lot in the issues? We do. So we but the only one doing the impact fees. The <laughs> only one. No one else is doing And how much is, is their impact fee? About 17000 per well. Over and above all these other fees, We're or right, is that all inclusive? That's real grind. That's there. That's above all the other road maintenance fees. Their impact fees only address, they, no, they don't really address. They drove roads, but like 97% went to roads. Sheriff, Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, well, that $17,000, is that all inclusive or do they still have uh, planning process fees? And oh, no, 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 no. They still have these. The impact fees are just, just the 97% of the road. They have nothing to do with, with how do I want to put this so I'm not being clear? They have nothing to do with processing the application. Mm -hmm. Just like our growth and impact fees that we charge on residential uh, proposals, they're over and above the application fees, the open space yes, fees, yes, yes, all yes. that stuff. So they're, they're, yeah, they're over and above. But the trade-off, right, is that they can't say, you broke this road, go fix it. I understand. Once those impact fees are collected, yeah, you're yeah. done. So we have to remember that. Do they have an impact fee study before they come? Yes, you have to. There, you can't charge impact the laws about impact fees. You have to have a study. Well, and we are any money? <laughs> we've got an impact fees for, for like commercial uh, development, but it's, five, it's a little over $5,000 per parcel. Doesn't matter, it's big or little. It's a one time thing, which is separate from the per square foot impact fee for a building or a bank, or say a bank versus a, a fast food versus storage facilities, which don't have very much traffic. There is a sliding scale. Well, I, I would suggest that we get together with the ads, both ads, and, and start, start the ads, start, <laughs> start getting a, 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 a feel for, you know, what we need, and plus some, and then find ways to justify it. Okay, so I guess what I what I need now is to who would like to help work on this. Does anybody want to help work on this? I don't think they would. Yeah, I'll help you. Okay, here is enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's All good. right. The other thing that I would like to do um, before, and this is mostly for us and also for the VOCC, I did this already. I read through all the regulations from all these counties when we first started, when we had a 64-page document. Because I want you to know what they were doing so I could compare it to what we were doing. We know that we're taking a document to the board that has some, 
room for argument in terms of operational conflict. We know that. And, the, and our position is that we don't feel it's in operational conflict. But the VOCC needs to know that we are aware that the GOCC might see it differently. Um, what I found is that, is that the Attorney General has not done much of anything unless a community has outright banned fracking. And the reason I'm saying that is because as you go through the regs from other jurisdictions, we, they have a lot of the same stuff we've been ours. And they've been in place for years. So what I'd like is to be able to um, maybe have some, and this is something you could just do at home and write it up, or just show up as the expert or whatever, but to look at our regs in comparison to these communities so that if we need to say to the commissioners, okay, so we know that they think this is an operational conflict, but our argument is this, and they have similar regulations here, 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 and here that haven't been challenged. Mm -hmm. So just to sort of help the commissioners, because we kind of are putting them in a, we want to give them all the information that we can so that they can make a reasonable decision and, and not be uh, putting us in harm's way, but on either side of it. Either side of the question, you know, the health and welfare of the community, but also in terms of legally. Um, so that was the other thing. So if anyone's interested in in reviewing the regulations from one of these communities and either writing them up or just showing up at the meeting, which will probably be well, the the planning commission meeting is the twenty third, and board meeting will probably be the twenty fifth June, unless something bizarre happens at the planning commission. Twenty fifth June, you said. Is that what I said? No, 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 Produce water on the roads. What are they doing about open pits? What are they, you know, these things that we know we're pushing the envelope a little bit according to them, um, so that the commissioners can can make a. I mean, it, it doesn't well, give us information I, to say COGCC thinks it might be an operational conflict. Well, I, well, I, I think they're sue us over it. I don't know. I but, can write it up, but I won't be there to defend it. That's okay. We just want to want to understand. You can defend it, say Rick said. Rick said. Rick said. Yeah. We, we just want to be able to, yeah, to give them that information. All right, so circling back to, that, that's fine. Coming back to this fee. Is that Wait a minute. A lot of people were. Is anybody willing to do that? You're willing to do that. Anybody else? Well, I think it's only natural. If we're going to do it, okay. part of the planning commission, we're going to be there to defend the decisions. Okay. Uh, if we need somebody to stand in front of the commissioners and uh, state the case, I'd love to. Well, it's not just stating the case, though. Maybe I haven't made myself No, state one. Because I've been saying this whole time. I just want them to There's be able to say, okay, so so we are proposing, for instance, that we not allow any produced water to be used for dust mitigation. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Attorney General made a comment about that because mm -hmm. COGCC allows it. But the committee determined that we felt that was a land use issue and it's arguable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now the VOCC, they know that it's, it's a question. Then we can say, but we've got one, two, three, four counties here who have had that sort of regulation in their regulations for years and have never been challenged by COGCC. And that gives them, or, or none of these communities have put that in their regulations, so we might be sticking our neck out far than we think. Whatever, just so they have Whatever, you know. reasonable, and I would do it, it's just I'm not sure I'm going to have time to farm. The, 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 the case yeah, always has been to me, and I've said it over and over, I say it again. Longmont and Fort Collins said no fracking. That shut right. down oil and gas yeah, exploration right. in their right. city limits yeah. and stay to their position. That it was takings, and we nice. all are familiar with takings. We've heard the term takings for decades here. So you can see where A connects with B. And, but in all these other things that are just basically add, can add a little cost to, to doing business, this just comes down to dollars and cents. You know, your risk going in, the cost going in, is it offset by potential profits at the end? And I 
don't think there's a lot of, you know, unless you're talking seriously big money, um, if they take us here, they're going to come here and they're going to take a biker and do it. And I don't think the state wants to get in the middle of that. And also, if you look at if you look at what's going on with the state right now, every week they're rolling back. If you look at where the COs, C, G, uh, or G, S, C, whatever it was, <coughs> just a year ago or two years ago, uh, first off, the, the the lawmakers of the state never got involved in this stuff. You know, and, and many positions on the commission were industry positions; they were people in the industry, and and so you've seen this in a few years. This more from just whatever the companies want to do, to now we're listening to what the people want to do, now we're considering the environment, and it's like every week things are changing, and it's only one reason they're changing is because counties and the public in general are putting up a united front and say we want to push these regulations, respond to us, our government. Okay. Well, maybe you and me can split this up. Then yeah. we'll get them. And as far as the fee committee, if you guys want to continue to meet Next Tuesday. on Tuesday evenings, or all three of you guys are retired, if you want to meet in a day, it's okay with me. I just assume we meet during the day. You know, that worked better. Yeah, it was a good day for you. Doesn't matter to me. Well, Wednesdays is not good. <laughs> Obviously. Because we have UOCC meetings. But other than that, um, got some meetings now. You know, we had a Monday morning meeting. We got a Tuesday morning meeting. So either of those days in the afternoon is fine. That makes more sense because then you've got the Eds are here being paid to be here anyway, so they'll be available and you've got probably better response from anybody in county government you want to talk to about this or to find some fees on or some costs. So I would say during the day would be fine, Tuesday afternoon or something. Or that one oh, yeah, okay. Uh, it really doesn't make any difference as long as I know a couple of days ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's do um, let's do Tuesdays. Can we do afternoons? Mm -hmm. Like at one? Yeah, sure. We don't have a meeting on Tuesdays on one, do we? Uh, it's possible, but the agenda meeting is Monday. Right. There's a there's a uh, workshop thing. Workshop on Tuesdays. Only if one wants, you know, has a particular interest, what that workshop. Unless you want to, you know, push it back to say two thirty on two. Well, how, how, you know, can we put a time limit on how long these things stretch out? Sure. No, it won't take us longer. I did uh, the, the the first thing, at least from my perspective, all I want to do is make a list uh, of, the, of, of the feeble events, mm -hmm. and then then uh, make sure that using. Rick's uh, comments here, and I think they're excellent ones. Make sure that the, the list is complete. Well, let's, um, to avoid meetings, let's, will Thursday work? What? Thursday work? Thursday morning? Will that work? Morning? That would, that would, I know we don't have meetings on Thursday. Next Thursday? Yeah, will that work? Or next Thursday? That's not tomorrow, a week from tomorrow. We know we can respond. We don't really have time to do it for that. What was that on time? For me. What time? You tell me. I would say for me, if for me, uh, it'll have to catch in earlier than 10 or 10 30. And the reason for that is uh, I feed up my cattle and that kind of stuff. And I start about 6 10 30. 10 30. Yeah, I can be here by 10 30. Okay. 10 30 on Thursday? Is that too early? Uh, no, you just have to come on the little flashlight so I can see where I'm going. 10 30. Next Thursday morning, Carolyn's buying breakfast. And I will meet. Uh, we'll meet downstairs in our conference room. There's okay. always going to meet up. You guys know where that is, right? Yeah. So that's Thursday. What's the yeah. date? Uh, Thursday the is the yeah, 18th. Yeah, it should work. Okay. I'm sure you'll send some email. I will. And that's at 1.30? At 1. No, 10.30. 10 Didn't you say 10.30? Yes. Right? He did. I don't know what I said, but I've got it. I, put, I changed you my feed. You better watch him every minute. I know. Um, okay, so that's all I got. Thank you very much. Thank you. So are we done then? Well, I think we're going to do public comment. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, everybody's, uh, everybody's satisfied with where the regulations are, where the MOU is. We've got uh, Thursday meetings set up to identify the vehicle events. Is there any reason for this group to get together and total anymore? Or? I'll 
I'll send out the little bit that we did tonight. Of course, yeah. And if anybody's got issues, just all right. Yeah? Yeah. So yeah, are you going to prepare us kind of a rough... some confetti. Yeah. <laughs> are you, you going to prepare us kind of a rough draft of what you think are the viewable events? And I'll, I'll spend some time thinking yes, about it. Yes, and I'm also going to talk to Arapaho about some of these questions that were brought up and find out, because I really didn't get a chance to talk to her. She just sort of sent this to me, and it's been, uh, you know, it's right. I, 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 I really do need some guidance to help you think my way through this building feed thing. <coughs> I, I, I think the easiest way is going to be just set a, a hard number for the standard for the miners. But then I, I think that we need to have something that's a little bit more imaginative. You, you know, evaluation based on major another, another way, Would another way to approach it be, I mean, there are multiple different types of facilities that are minor, different types type that are majors. And I don't know if each of those involve different costs in terms of what the county has to put into it. But maybe each of those types of facilities have, have, a, different di di have a different fee. I don't, I don't know, it just occurs to me, because they're, they're different things. Um, yeah, and then, then, then the question is, uh, uh, we're, we're trying to get people to plus to the facilities. Are we gonna, you know, yeah. I, I, I just gotta get away and think about it. Yeah, that's yeah, maybe build some incentives. But you're heading exactly where yeah, I'm going. Yeah, yeah, well, that yeah. was kind of why I was saying we might want to look at a, a fee that's composed of a flat fee and then a per acre fee. Because the per acre fee, if they're going to add a well to an existing pad, I would think that the per acre fee would apply. Because that part's already been mm -hmm. reviewed, right? Right. That's kind of where I was thinking when I said. We, let's give it a week to think about yeah, it. Yeah, think about yeah, it. Because there's going to be yeah. topics that we need. And I'll do some work yeah, on it. But uh, I agree with Ben that if you have any ideas, the, 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 the minor I think is pretty easy because they're, they're small. But when, once you start thinking about majors, like uh, yeah. there, there's got to be a little bit more thought put into how sure. that is. And I really like the idea of impact fees that include things like the schools and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, I'm not sure how we would include those things in, in this type of fee schedule, but they're definitely things that would be included in impact fees. The question is, how do we convince the commission? Well, I'll make some calls. Well, you know, you know what? See, Adola might even have some grants to help. In fact, yeah. it seems like I heard about some. Yeah. It had to do with oil and gas and dealing with oil and gas, that might help us pay for an impact study. And one of the things that I've, I've thought of along this process, and sometimes we get stuck on this, and I, you know, you have to go back and say, what do we know? Well, we know development. Even though we haven't done it in a few years, we know development. We know how we were structuring our fees for that, because big ones were trying to come in. So can we learn something from that and just kind of, you know, this is how we set these fees up for <coughs> the things we needed when they're coming in. This is how it was laid out, what kind of, how it was packaged to them. And so we just have to you no. know, go with what you know now, yeah. trying to explore what you know. When we had Ed in here that one time, for it was, albeit it was somewhat brief, but uh, he really kind of pushed us away from getting involved in his business in terms of... Mm -hmm. uh, well, he's going to have to. And you know, he did, but I think that... Um, as the realities set in, in terms of what sort of resources this is going to take, um, I think he's more receptive. We had a meeting uh, last week, and we talked about maybe having inertia take over um, putting together the road use agreements, and we just charge a fee for that, just like we do now. You know, we charge a, an escrow fee for that and get it to the point where it's ready to be submitted to the VOCC for approval and signed. Yeah, and, and, and at that point. Let me interject. I think you might have misinterpreted why he was reacting the way he was. The reason he was reacting the way he was was not because he understood the task and wanted to make sure it stayed in the corral. He didn't have any kind of task, any kind of corral on the task. He, there is no road use agreement for the oil well, out uh, of Sylvester Place, there, none of those have been put together. So he didn't have a handle on what it was, what the task was, or how to, how to control it. 
Hmm. And I think you may have misinterpreted. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's at that time that's that's true. They actually, they're actually a lot closer. They actually have a template now that the only thing they're fighting about at this point is the bond amount. Um, but the rest of it is is it, actually it was like, actually about six eight months ago. Right, and and uh, the pipeline is also very close using a very similar template. The difference, as I said, is that um, the bond amount for the pipeline, based on, on engineering's estimates, is 37,000, I think, a mile. Whereas for the well, the bonding amount is half a million per mile. So they're still hashing that out. I'm not keeping up. The well, the bond now. In other words, the, the bond it, for the well is significantly more than for the pipeline. So that's why they're still having difficulty um, coming to agreement. Yeah, I was wondering. Uh, uh, engineering yeah. made those determinations. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The pipeline sometimes. But is that just way more dangerous? So it's not a fee at all. It's just a bond now. Oh, they I have understand. to bond for that much because the potential um, in terms of uh, accidents and problems is significantly greater for the well than it is for the pipeline. Pipeline's an empty piece of whatever it is, poly, whatever it is. Yeah, until it's called. Until it's, yeah, <laughs> but, the bond, but the bond isn't for that, it's for the roads. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, it, it doesn't really pertain. But the well's different because the well's bringing all that. The, those water trucks in, all those heavy trucks and everything, um, the impacts are greater on a, on a much smaller um, segment of road. Oh, the people in Arkansas that have who is it? Uh, Exxon? Exxon's pipeline now bringing down their down their street, street uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's that's really what they're hashing out at this point. But but Rick's right. It, initially, they really weren't sure what that road use agreement was going to look like. The first one they did was with the uh, the wind towers, I believe. Your wind towers, right? And and it worked pretty well. But that was that was the first time they'd ever done one. It was an experiment. So, so they kind of kept building on that. The question, I guess, I'm kind of leading up to, or uh, kind of skirting around, would that uh, the road use agreement would that be a feasible event for us to discuss, or will that be a feasible <coughs> event that's going to be set through discussions with Road and Bridge? You mean the review of it, or the a creation of it? Is, is that what you mean? Yeah, well, I'm, that I'm be, assuming that they're going to charge some fee for doing right. it. Yeah. That would actually be signed set by inertia. They're going to tell us. And they're going to do it exactly the way that Pete said. They're going to say, okay, it, it takes us an average of X number of hours you know, to do it. Yeah. Some of them they're going to make money, more money on. Some of them they're going to make less money on, depending sure. on, you know. But they're going to give us, which inertia is really great about that. A lot of engineering companies won't do that. But they will give us flat fees. So that when we go to the applicant, there's always the understanding that there could be additional fees that, that we'll have to collect along the way. But or maybe even a refund. But yeah, and maybe a refund. I'm not sure that's ever happened, but <laughs> but that's the understanding is that you know they can have a reasonable expectation yeah. of that what their review fees are going to be. So and, and we go over that at the pre-submittal as well. All right. Is there anything else that you wanted to discuss? That's it. All right. Is there any public comment? Does anyone wish to speak? Sure. <laughs> you haven't brought that in. So just for your information, there's a bill tomorrow in the House 1273 that would, if it's approved, give local government quite a bit of money to help with this whole permitting process. So write to your uh, representative and get their uh, help. Who's this. my representative? <laughs> to door. To door. Uh, he's not on that committee. It's um, I forget the names of all the people there, but I know that there are a number of them who are. Uh, so it's voted. just coming on committee. It's not. Good. It's going to be voted on in committee tomorrow. Who will be heard tomorrow? And there's a bill after that too that will might make some difference. They're doing health monitoring of up and down the front range communities. And uh, there's, there'll be some money appropriated for that too, which could impact us a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, thanks for all your work on this, guys. You've been working really hard. Um, I appreciate everything that you've done. Thank you. Too. Well, yeah, you're the sergeant chair. Well, I'm not part of the committee. Uh, I certainly have um, had my two cents.
chance to put in. Been here as long as us. Two, but, <laughs> two but anyway, that's beside the point. So um, the baseline water sampling, I think you got that covered. I appreciate that. I think that's okay with me. Um, I'm still not happy with the open pits. Um, I still Fresh water open pits. I don't want any open pits. I can't believe that they're not used to store um, hydrocarbons. Well, the, it, it, thanks to thanks to, to Tony, we we did speak some language in there that provides. Maybe for, I missed that. It was just, just tonight. Or, it, was yeah, tonight. Yeah. it was just That's approved tonight. tonight where we will inspect county will inspect the pits mm -hmm. periodically. Okay, sure. And it's it's a violation of their permits yeah. are revoked. Yeah. 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 Thank you for doing that. So um, the other another thing with the water protection is um, either green frac fluids, and I don't know if that could go in the MOU or in the CCSP. Yeah. Um, we did add them. Yeah. Yeah. Is your what, what is your yeah, I got tired. I got tired of running them off. I probably have. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, we know. We so know. I said, you wouldn't do it. it. Because I couldn't keep up with it. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, Jay. Use of green frack ingredients shall be used. So M O U or rates. Sorry. M O U or rates. No, in the in the in the in the M O in the in the B M O U in the M O U. In the M O U. So it'd be consideration about putting that in the regulations is too. Well, it's the same problem as always, I right? Know, I understand, but it's our water protection, which I think we've been given the okay to do at whatever cost there are that makes sense to Well, me. it's in there uh, if you recognize it, recognize it, because if they don't go the MOU route, then they got to go the full special use route, right. and then that would be used as a condition of approval. Because you feel okay about that? It, well, we would have to see what the facts are, but if, if, if it was appropriate at the time, we put it as a condition of approval. Yeah, there's no, there's no way they can go through the process and do it without having some, some eyeballs on them doing it. Mm -hmm. So if it goes through the whole process, then it's got you know, a bunch of different levels that's going to be heard at as part of the hearing. So, uh, okay, the other thing, and we were talking about fees and bonds, or fees and uh, permit fees and so forth and so on. Um, I was looking at the regulations that you ran off for us at the beginning, Swatch and Rio Grande. And another alternative, and I don't know what's in the regulations now or in the MOUs, but they're serious bonds, liability insurance required, and a financial assurance in case of an accident. So I heard you discussing what uh, fees need to be charged Maybe that would be another way around those fees. Well, here's, here's the problem. We discussed this, gosh, it was some months ago, and, and, and I can't remember if you were there or not, but there, there's actually case law that talks about, uh, I think it's the case out of Gunnison County, that, that talks about um, uh, uh, that issue, and, and that is where they said there's pretty clear preemption. In okay. other words, if, if COGCC has a bonding requirement, right. we can't. We can't uh, um, exceed it or. or well, I think they've done more. that in Swatch in Rio Grande County. And I know they that. you I know review that. that, that might be something for you to look at again and see. Well, in fact, I believe that, that when we initially talked about it, um, I brought that up, that it actually is in the Swatch and the Rio Grande regulations. Mm -hmm. um, but. Rick felt that it was um, not an arguable point that we would, because there's case law that we would probably, see the other things really haven't been tested. But, but I think Rick's point is, especially if Rick's going to do the comparison, we can at least show that comparison to the agency. Sure. 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 It's included. It's sure. sure. an option. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's one thing if something's not been tested in court and we're going to push that on board. It's something else if it's clearly already been tested. <laughs> And lost in court because then you know we probably not. we'll push through over there. Right, I understand. And I understand the compromises that you had to make in order to achieve those ends too, and that's cool. So my only other question is um, timeline now. This MOUs and regs go to the planning commission next. Yeah, what date is that? They're, uh, they're scheduled for the twenty third of next month. So that's a Tuesday. 
You should be Thursday. 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 Th
and the motivations in there. But so what, what, run the course, that's the reason you have a process. Is there any other public comment? Yes, sir. Hi. Um, I've only come three or four, three times, something like that, but um, if, it, if I could it, ask you a question about one thing that will lead to my question about liability. Um, and it's public record, but it's easier if I just ask you if any of you guys have, um, just show hands or whatever, have uh, owned your mineral rights. I own some. So three? Uh, I also own some water. I also own some cows. Uh, yeah, so do I. So how many of you then have a lease? Have, have you signed a lease with uh, any bill? Any I've leased some of mine. Okay. I, I was I was approached and they never came back. Okay. Uh, there's just a curiosity. Um, my concern is, that, and I don't see it, I saw a little bit in some of the uh, statements in the CFGCC's rules that they have a, a courtesy, maybe, of uh, asking the uh, surface owner uh, when they plan on coming on the property, as they would contact the operator, too. Uh, I didn't see any of that in here. And it leads me to believe, like, uh, that you don't have to. Uh, is that an understanding, that I'm misunderstanding, that you have every right to come onto my property to, yeah, look, let's say uh, my property is the property that, that, that'll that have a operating, uh, you know, an operation on. I don't know whether I have my minerals or not, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's a question of uh, liability of the person coming on. If I sign a lease or a service agreement uh, you have an indemnity clause in there that holds you harmless from any any situation that, that would arise that they do damage to the property or start shooting at each other or whatever. Okay, and uh, and I feel comfortable that I have that, but I haven't done any surface agreement yet because I don't have anything on my surface. But if I do, I will. But that that doesn't mean that the person from the state, from the county or the state. I asked the state this, and they actually couldn't answer it very well. But if, if the person that des is designated to come on the property to inspect a, a, a situation, whatever it might be, except an emergency, uh, whatever that might be, then we would probably you know, know that they're there. Uh, how are they covered? So I feel that I would feel comfortable that I'm not responsible Let for Let me ask a couple questions to make sure I understand your question. Are you asking about the state inspectors? Or are you asking about... Either one. I mean, you can't answer the state, but you can answer the person that would be the county representative that would come on the property to inspect whatever situation is that they're going to inspect. Well, I have a copy of the COGCC financial Which insurance one? and their bonding program, if you'd like to read that. I think okay, that's... What is it, 700? Yes. Um, okay, okay, I'll read it. I'll go and read it. Okay. But that's what the information I think you're asking about. Uh, yeah, that might be, but... In our situation in the county, I don't think we have anything in our rules or regulations that's more intense than the COGCC. The best answer that I got from the state was, well, they're covered by workers' comp or something. And I go, okay, well, that's, that doesn't matter. It's pretty vague, and it's not very specific. I right. agree. Yeah. So, same way, I mean, uh, actually, Nancy, I think it was Nancy that was here. Nancy, yeah. I asked her that, and she's jumped like, way to the other that's side. Well, yeah, if you start shooting at them, it's your, your responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even bring that up. No, I was actually asking she's her about a bull. If a bull got loose and started chasing somebody, who's like, well, unfortunately, it probably wouldn't be. Okay. Because uh, they're not confused. covered under the... Uh, I'm still confused in your question. I understand the question about the COGC yeah. and whether the, the county has uh, liability insurance. I, I understand that question. But even those of us that own a few minerals, most of the land that we ranch on, we don't own the minerals on. The state owns a lot of the minerals. And a dark oak, uh, as, 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 uh, from the railroad, they own half the minerals. So by the time you get a job done, uh, 
uh, do on the surface? Some of them. Uh, because the state owns a lot of it. If you're right. these, but coming back to the point I'm coming to, uh, and I, I, I'm kind of gathering from you also that if you uh, that you lease them, you know, I've got uh, a, a paragraph in uh, my lease that says, thou shalt not enter until you have a surface use agreement. Yeah. With me. I did that with the size of people. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, there, well, even, at, even if you own the surface, it's pretty hard if the state has leased their minerals under your surface thing, to not allow whoever <coughs> leased those minerals to yeah, come on. You, you, no, you, but, yeah, but you're oh, still... You, what, 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 you're, what, you're, what you're concerned about is somebody from the county comes on your yeah, yeah, yeah. Slips on a... Slips on a... Slips on, a, slips on, a, slips on something. Falls down and sues you. That's what you're concerned about. Is that? Well, I don't want them to sue me. That's what I'm concerned about. That, I mean, that, exactly. Okay, All right. uh, that, 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 that's what I thought you were getting at. Yeah. I, I mean, the easiest way I, to, to deal with that risk, if you're a service owner, is that in your service use agreement, you have an indemnity and hold right. harmless agreement that well, says that, would, that, that they hold, you indemnify and hold you harmless for any and all claims arising out of or connected with their operations, which would be, include a claim for this kind of inspection. That's that's all. That's how you deal yeah, with it. But the county person doesn't work. I don't know for sure. It doesn't matter. It's still it's a but I, I would guess that the county does have liability insurance. And the reason I'm saying that is because as planners, we go out to private property all the time. Assessors go out to private property all the time. They don't necessarily call ahead. Um, I don't know that for sure. Yeah, but Carolyn, it's, it's, but it would guessing, be his homeowner's policy, it's not your liability coverage that would protect him in that situation unless he was an additional insured or something. I mean, it's it's his homeowner's policy or, or whatever indemnification arrangement he has with the, with the operator, you know, that would, that, would, that would deal with that the situation. The assessor situation or the one I'm talking about? No, what you're talking about. No. You know, in, in, other words, in other words, the county's liability policy isn't going to protect you. Yeah. I'm having a feeling before I call my insurance company they're, they're not going to like that idea very much. So, you know, why would it if I if I'm not necessarily giving them permission to come on this, on the property, but the county has taken it upon themselves to come on whenever they deem it right? Why, well, I would think the county would call you first and let, let you know. The That's what I'm saying. It's not it's not written in the regulation. There's zoning regulation somewhere says when an applicant applies to the county relative to a particular parcel or study, they grant permission for the county to come on to that property and inspect it. That's otherwise they don't get permit or they don't, you know, it's part of the And I don't know how the assessors do it, but I don't I'm it. pretty sure they don't call. <laughs> well, I, I, don't know. I think that's a question that you're in the wrong forum to ask because I mean, we're, we're sitting here fishing around <coughs> and we have two attorneys sitting with us but it doesn't I, i'm not sure that they're willing to risk yeah. giving you a professional opinion right now yeah. and i know that if you if you if you take it out to the extreme if a sheriff's deputy responds to something on your property and gets hurt while he's on your property you know who's viable for that i mean there's so many questions i i don't see how we can if you contact me, I have a um, property owner's guide to leasing. It's not from Colorado. It's quite thick, so it covers a whole ton of stuff. And it's from Ohio, but it might still give you some direction on that. Because it's all about the questions that a lease, somebody who's contemplating a surface use agreement, um, <coughs> the questions that they would have. Well, that point you made about the operator. You know, holding me on this, uh, I would make sure that that would yeah, be in that. In, in, yeah, but, but in expanding that, they it includes anyone that, that they any any of their personnel. But it still doesn't. A county person inspecting the fire <laughs> operation still is wouldn't be. You can you can draft it. You can draft it so it doesn't put that. Though. That's the whole point. Okay. Um, I met some people in Garfield County who wouldn't do a surface use agreement. <laughs> The operators came on anyway. They posted a bond to the COGCC, which is what they require, and they just drilled where they wanted. 350 feet from this, these people's home. 
So yeah, yeah, that's the worst case they scenario. Can do that. I understand that. You know, that. Now you started off your question by asking about when you get notice and what kind of notice is required to be provided to the landowner, whether you have the mineral rights or not. You want to take a look at Rule 305 in the COBCC rules. It's all available online. 305. And there's a fairly elaborate lay down in terms of 30 day notice and 20 day notice before heavy equipment comes onto the property. If the landowner is not the mineral right owner and they object to the arrival and they have an opportunity to go to COBCC, it's all laid out there. If that's your worry, it'll give you yeah. a lot of detail. And, 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 I, and I, in this case, I would be the mineral owner and I would be the. You do. Right. Uh, you know, that person, I would want that in the contract with, right. with the operator, but, but you know, again, it's still my life. <coughs> still hanging out there. So. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else wishes to speak? Yes, sir. Yes. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. Uh, next question. Is there going to be another one? Or Ask problems? the question again. Next public meeting. The next public meeting will be the planning commission meeting on May the 23rd. The 23rd. By the way, I said the 20th of June, it's the 19th. Sorry. 23rd is the planning commission, the 19th. Yes, yeah, the 20th is the Thursday. But this is the last meeting for this. This is the last meeting for this. Yay! All right. Is that what all you need to say? Uh, just to follow up on what he said. So I, I felt like he was trying to lead to, and maybe I was wrong, uh, to the question of is his concern something that should be addressed in, in what you're dealing with? And you're saying no. It's as far as the liability issue for well, it's something that should be included in a, uh, in a in a memorandum. I, I don't see how we could. I don't either. That would that would be a county business thing because they they're the ones who would be taking the liability. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, that would be something that would be in that. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? I'm going to ask you to think a little bit just a little bit more. Regarding your impact fees, and just off the top of my head, it seems to me that your biggest impact for a long time is going to be roads. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know how or when schools would be impacted by oil and gas drilling. Well, Just if you start out where you have people moving in because you have permanent, um, okay, you know, things and housing goes up and we have uh, twenty years from now. That's what we do, right? That's twenty, 20 years from now. You know, the sheriff those are impacted right away, right? If we do it right, <laughs> nobody but the road is going to be impacted. No emergency response, no sheriff. No. Yeah, that's not really been the experience of these communities. <laughs> no, no drunken oil workers out there spending their paychecks. Did she yeah. take the question? There goes my idea of opening up a solution again. Uh, she my latest draft of the MOU, Carolyn, is this uh, housekeeping. Oh, okay. The MOU? Yeah, page two, number three. Third line after. Submitted to the commission for new wells. You had drills, and now it says drills. It should be drills. All right. Item three? Yep. Commission for new wells drilled after the effective date. For new wells, renegade drills after the effective date. We're going to insert renegade. This is looking to the future. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. In other words, it's, it's, it's the company. Can't new wells yeah. operator drills. Drill, drill, drills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, okay, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. I asked okay. about this, the default provision number 12 on page 4. And you explained that was your hammer, and I thought that was thinking about it okay. Would you consider inserting in the next to last line, if the MOU was terminated due to the failure to cure the default, the permit will be pulled? Fine. Oh, that's somebody else. Okay, give me that language again. Due to the failure, failure to cure the default. Have you got any hardware from that? Third line, uh, 
Service Office, the following for the well site information. I move information to that the following. The following information for the well site. Wait, where are we? Three? Yeah, um, third one. Okay, I'll just the following for the well site information. Move the following. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll put that around. Okay. Um, on page seven, number eight, I asked about this every effort. That's fine. We'll contact the service owners. In the second sentence, can we say every effort means contacting? When you say includes, you guys can come up with other efforts. Yes, if we do. Wouldn't you want to follow them if they were effective? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to follow any of them. I'm saying, I mean, leave this in there. We're going to contact them with us. Mile, ask them if they know of any abandoned wells on the property. Yeah. But we had a discussion. And if we came up with another method that we could offer you, yeah. we would ask you to use it. You know, method Jamie, method. I'm not sure what bothers you about this, but, but I guess my feeling is that we We've heard a lot and read a lot about the problems with abandoned wells. And so our effort here, we want you to take every effort, and if we think of new ones, those two, to, to recognize them so that they don't pop up and cause problems. And I should think that would be in your best interests as well. Because when you go to drill there, somebody else has identified abandoned well, you know there's one there. And, and for whatever reason, if it needs to be looked at or tested or, or logged or whatever, I guess I'm not really understanding why this bothers you. Those abandoned wells, if they're there, yeah. and I know what Nancy Prince said, if they're there, mm -hmm. are none of my concern. Now, on the environmental side of things and fixing that, that's, that's but my business has nothing to do with those. And I am not responsible for it. But it's the county's concern. And we're not asking you to be responsible for that. We're just no, asking you to... That's another argument that I would make against that. But again, I'm not trying to... To identify them. them. All we're trying to really do is, make, is help as much as we can identify them. I guess I think of this and... It, and it's as much a surface use... Surface owner's problem is mine. Think, more of a surface owner's problem. I think problem of this the well, same no, way no. as realtors now, it's a, it's legislated that realtors have to, they are responsible for making sure when they sell property to the well that that well gets transferred into the name of the new owner. Now, that's not Water really, owner? yeah, okay. that's not really their responsibility. But the fact of the matter is the state knows their records are hosed. Okay, so they're using that as a tool to help them get their records more correct. I guess I think of this in the same way, but obviously you think of it differently. You're just afraid that by locating them, you're going to have some implied liability. And I'm also concerned, I'm taking it to, taking it to the nth degree, that I make the first effort, and then you guys say, ah, that wasn't enough. Make another effort. Here, go do this. Go knock on other doors. And prove it to me. And until you do, I'm not going to issue your permit. Well, he doesn't have any trust at all. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have any trust at all. Hey, Jerson, do you guys turn this one up? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's reciprocated. It's reciprocated. I'm making a request. I'm, 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 I'm not very sympathetic. Okay. The, uh, the, uh, this started out that they wanted you to log the abandoned wells and all that kind of stuff. And we explained that, that was somewhat difficult because the holes were full of cement. But the idea that if there is an abandoned well out there and there's a piece of pipe sticking up there and you, you stumble over it and it's not listed, uh, I don't see why that this is such a terrible exercise to have to notify COGC. That's all we've that We haven't asked you to do anything more than I that. Think, I don't think and on the liability What side, you just said is that if that happens, I'll tell COGCC. I'm cool with that. You're, so saying, what's the you're saying I'm going to make every effort to find these wells. And every effort includes... I'm saying every effort means. Well, we've had, we it's, have it's, 12 paragraphs that we tried to cover every effort. It's just this effort. big old thing out there. Yeah, I'll, I, I think it's fine the way it is. Fine. What else should I Um, The vapor recovery unit. Yes. Where? I don't, number six, above there. Okay, so. All this oil comes with associated natural gas. Um, if we don't have a gas sales tie in, we have to burn it until we get one. We recover that natural gas via a separator or a treater. The vapor recovery unit is a specialized system that takes vapors 
that can't be captured in the separator off of a tank and inserts them in either to the flare or to the gas sale system. We talked about it a couple meetings ago. It's a very expensive piece of equipment. And did you hear how I, we got that change? Um, we did it tonight. Well, I'm not sure that right. that's the question. Right. Um, yeah, but I'm going to make sure that well. we got the right one. So. No, I'm looking at it. Talking apples and. Okay. My vertical wells don't economically don't support paper recovery. They just. The language I added there recognizes that. All, all it says here is if if we can if there's no way, obviously you're not going to use labor recovery unit if you have no way to get to market. Right, but I'm not going to use one if I do have a way to get to market. Tomorrow. Yeah, but we're talking about sufficient quantities there too. Well, I'm going to have sufficient gas quantities in my separator. I'm not going to be economically able to suck those little vapors off the tanks, which is what a vapor recovery unit does. Don't patronize me. I know okay. what the hell you're okay. talking about. Okay. Uh -oh. So, coming back to the facts here, the way we changed that was, that, and that was at your request, is that yeah, if, if, if there's a market there for it, put the vapor recovery on it. If there isn't, burn it. And you can you do that until there are sufficient quantities of vapors to warrant the installation of those facilities. Okay, I'll read the... Isn't that what I said? Yep, it says, yeah. here's what it says. So that, that was recognizing your comment. When market I disagree gathering, that you addressed it. Maybe I didn't make it well enough. Well, I think we did. Do you we, want me to we've read? Got, we've got 100 tank batteries up there, and we have zero vapor recovery. I understand that. That's because there's not enough gas uh, uh, vapors. Uh, I didn't say that. Right. Liquid vapors coming off there to, uh, to warrant the installation of a vapor recovery system. But this says I'm going to do it. No, it doesn't. No, no I'm really Here's what it says. This wasn't the line Here's what it says. When market gathering lines are within one half mile from a full proposed oil or gas well, the operator shall install a vapor re recovery unit system within 90 days of commercial production. If gathering lines are not available, the operator shall install a high efficiency burner until such time as sufficient volumes of vapor are available, I think, I gotta rewrite this, to justify uh, the installation of such facilities. I'm having an issue with the use of the word vapor and not natural gas. I guess I think that's Oh, if you want to put natural gas liquids in there, I'm cool with that. Natural gas gas. It's fine. That? Uh, na uh, natural gas See, and... The way I do this is if... When, when they're in half a mile, I'll install a separator. <laughs> Within 90, I'm, I'm going to install a separator the first day. I can't produce my well without a separator. That'd be great. Maybe I'm getting it wrong, maybe I'm not getting it across to you. Yeah, we're well, just trying to take the vapors off the top of your tanks and, and vessels and re-inject it into something where it goes to market. Right, where it burns or goes to market. Yeah. If there's enough vapors. Right. Yeah. This first sentence says you're going to install them. Yeah, but it's qualified by the second. But the second has to do with selling the natural gas off the separator, not right. the vapors. Okay, that's where our... You'll, no, never, get, you'll, you'll never get enough vapors off your tank to justify a gas sales line, ever. There just aren't that many of them. The, what you sell no, is the, 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 this gas is, off the separator. This is logic that makes no sense. Yeah, you, you do sell the gas off the separator, I agree with that. Okay. But if there's enough vapors off the tanks and your other vessels to warrant vapor recovery, then you should do it. It's good for the county and good for you too. I agree. That's what it says. That's not how I read it. Well, that's, so, that's the difference. So, so you would rather see natural gas instead of vapor? That's fine. I don't know. I don't know that this I'd rather see, see vapor. I'm okay with the concept of setting vapor recovery unit when there's well, <coughs> economic sense. I'd rather yeah. see vapor recovery unit when there's economic sense. I don't read this, this language right as risk for yes. all companies, not just that's our business. Right. Company. You're saying it's mandatory. Yes. They're saying it's not mandatory, yeah. so... We're saying it's mandatory if it's economic, yes. If it's economically, but he's feeling it's mandatory regardless. Right. It's not and it's not right. right. You're, you're reading it wrong. Okay. I'll, I'll read. I don't know. We didn't mean it that way. I th think that's the issue. I think it's we're in agreement. But now concept, that I'm reading it, I'm thinking, it. okay, so basically what we're saying is if there are gathering lines within a half a mile, he has to put on a vapor recovery unit. Gathering lines should have nothing to do with it. If there are not I mean, gathering lines, 
then he can put in a high efficiency burner until such time as it is economically feasible to put in the gathering arms. And pay for recovery systems. Well, that's, those are two separate issues. It's economically feasible for my natural gas off my separator to lay in a gathering line and sell my natural gas. Whether but there's never going to be enough gas off the tanks to justify a line. Correct. Okay. But, but that there, doesn't mean there won't ever be a line within a half mile of the tank, is the point he's trying to make. Is that it's possible he could have a, a market gathering line within a half mile of his facility, okay, and it would still not be economically feasible for him. For the vapor recovery unit. Yeah, I understand. Okay. But then you would burn it, is that correct? Yeah, if you don't have but that's to sell how, it, you burn That's it. actually it's not how it's written. It's exactly right. And you get it to the market just as fast as you can. It's not and actually the way it's written. That's one process that has to be But now that I think of it, as he's saying, he's right. Basically, we're, we're doing an either or here. If there are gathering lines within a half mile of his operation, then he has to install a vapor and recovery unit within 90 days. If there are not gathering lines, then he can use an efficiency burner until there are gathering lines. What he's saying is, what we've left out of here is when there are gathering lines, but it's still not economically feasible. Yes, because often, uh, and he's right to a point, often if, the, if a well doesn't make a lot of of gas or a lot of oil, there's not going to be hardly any vapors on, on coming off of the tank. If, and I'm just going to make up some numbers. If if uh, if the well only makes 30 barrels of oil a day, and it has a GOR or gas oil ratio uh, that's uh, relatively low, you'll have to take that gas off the separator. But the amount of gas that goes with the oil over to the tank is relatively de minimis. So my intent there was is to handle both ways. Is that well, I know that was the intent, but I think I think I you're think right. We, I think we agree on the intent. That we need to the problem with with I understand what you want. The problem is how do we define economically feasible? So he's saying oh. there's not enough for him to install a vapor recovery unit. Um, and so instead, he's going to burn it, even though there are lines near him. No. Well, they, 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 for the day, there's, there's two pieces to this. One is if there's a line within a half a mile, and it's, there's enough gas there to build the line in to get that gas. That's step but one. But we didn't say that. And then step two is then is if there's enough uh, vapor coming off of the tank to justify... Uh, install. In installing the vapor recover recovery system, thou shalt do it. And I'm cool with that. that. That's exactly right, but I don't believe that's what that says. All right. Could Say that read, again. Could you read the language again, Carolyn? When market gathering... No, no, the second sentence. If, if gathering lines are not available, the operator shall install a high efficiency, efficiency burner until such time as sufficient volumes of vapor are... Okay, I see the point. Do you so see? Yeah, there's two points. Until there's sufficient volumes of natural gas to uh, just uh, uh, to cause the well to be tied in, and a vapor recovery system will be installed when there's sufficient volumes of nat uh, vapors on the tanks. Yeah, off the facilities. Well, no, I understand. let me, from a lame person standpoint, now that you got all this thinking here. <laughs> um, when, first off, the first sentence, when market, when market gathering lines with one and a half miles, so who, who's putting these lines in? Where, how did they get there? Did they just grow there? Or? There are a bunch in place already. Okay. And people who make their money, much like a commercial disposal water well, people who make their money gathering the process. Gathering yes. up your vapors. The pipeline, that, the front range pipeline, yeah. okay. is going to do just exactly this. So what about if it's a natural gas? The operator shall install a vapor recovery unit system within 90 days of commercial production. If gathering lines are not available, the operator shall install a high efficiency burner until such lines are available. That's the way it was. That's the way it was, but the problem yes. is, the problem is, is 
what JV is telling us is that even if there are lines available, it may still not be economically viable. I think the right answer is exactly what Paul said, and this is frightening. <laughs> and just take out the vapor recovery stuff altogether. Because what, if once there's a sufficient volume of vapors off the tank, then they'll be injected into the, into the line. But what we, the first step is, is to get the major volumes of gas into a pipeline. And if we just say the last and no such lines are available, it, 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 it does what we want it to do because right now we're trying to it, it does. we are trying to quantify when is that breaking point between when there's enough vapor and not enough vapor, and once again we're we're getting into areas that we don't have expertise. In. I mean, what what you're talking about doing is eliminating that first sentence. Basically, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, well, well, no, because no, what we're saying, no, what you're saying, show me. Uh, for me, in my lay person's way of looking at things, for years and years and years of reading federal regulation, when market gathering lines were within one half mile, because oil, gas, and all the other shells, all vapor recovery system within 90 days of commercial production, period. That's what it no, says. That's, that's, that's exactly what That's what it says, but that's not, that's not, what, you, that's not what you said before. Oh, that's exactly what I just I, I know. When I said if gathering lines are not available, the outside shell is still a high efficiency burner until such lines are available. In other words, you make it just ambiguous. It's, it's ambiguous enough that it says what you want it to say. You take out the box and connect to the gathering. Yeah, here's. Because here, how can we put a dollar amount or, or put an economic value on it? Because we don't know. Uh, but every, every operator has a different idea of when it's going to be economically feasible. So how can we address that and, and try to make but, it let, Let's show you two steps. One is when marketing and gathering lines are with one half mile of a proposed oil and gas well, the op operator shall connect their production facilities to such system. So that gets the, 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 gas, the gas, the gas that comes with the oil. Because the, the, the right. is it? Yeah, so, and that's the major volume. Okay, uh, and just within the 90 days, so shall uh, basically connect the, uh, the, the, well, uh, the well's production truck into such system. And then the next <coughs> part is uh, vapor recovery units will be installed as soon as there's sufficient vapors to justify <coughs> their installation. Is, and then that's a relatively small volume. And in the absence of a vapor recovery, you burn that You burn it, yes. even off the tanks. Okay, so that, vapor recovery systems yeah. will be installed. What was that language? Okay, so, so the first thing is connect. connect the I got that. Okay, and then the second system. Uh, vapor recovery systems will be installed when. There are sufficient volumes of, and I don't even use vapors or natural gas liquids or whatever, vapors uh, uh, to justify okay. their installation. And then, and then that last line can still stay the way that it is because it really addresses a different point. It is a completely different point. Exactly. Okay. Am I making sense? Or Who's do this no. to us, Jamie? <laughs> What's the purpose? Maybe you answer real quick. And we're not letting you talk anymore. We want to be done. It. This is it? No. Or you got three questions? Or... What was your question? Right? Your three minutes are up, Jamie. <laughs> 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 this is not a hearing. This is not a hearing. I am in the regulations, page four. Yeah, should have seen this earlier. I apologize. I feel like Michael Corleone. Uh, <laughs> operational conflict flavor, the last sentence. We've gotten through the point where we've made application for a waiver, the board has granted it. If the applicant or any person entitled to receive notice of the original application, yeah, yeah, you're going to have to help me. Where are you at? It's I'm sorry. Regulations, page four. four. J. 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 Last sentence. Last sentence. Okay. If the applicant or any person entitled to receive notice of the original application for the oil and gas facility wishes to seek judicial review, they may appeal to the district court pursuant to CRCP rule, whatever that one is. I don't know if rule CRCP rule 106A4 
grants the right to anyone living within a mile of the well to question the decision of the Board of County Commissioners, but this language does, yeah. and I have an issue with that. <coughs> so we've gone through a process, we've sought review, it's gone to the Board of County Commissioners, they've granted an operating waiver, <coughs> and anyone who lives within a mile of my well can tie in court forever. Um, so I don't know if there was thinking behind that. I don't know if no, that's that's original language. Right. But and I don't know. I'm going to make a guess, but I'll find out. Okay. okay. I'm going to make a guess that Richard put that in there because that language does give that permission, and he probably stole it from somewhere else. I um, but I can do two things. I can first check, see what that will says, and the other thing I can do is I can send him an email and ask him what he was thinking um, about that, what the rationale for that was. And obviously, if it doesn't say that, then we probably don't want to rethink that because the BOC, as far as we're concerned, when the BOCC is done, we're done. So, okay, that, I, no, I, I would say that. You from a 106 point of view, the rule 106 is simply judicial review. Uh, there's probably a water quality issue. It could conceivably be a water supply issue. And we're already outside the envelope of the mile notification. If somebody decides that, they, that their interests are injured, they've made a record of the injury in the deliberative process in front of the county commissioners, they do have standing then to go in a 106 action but the good news about that is if they lose, they pay. And obviously they got real estate that they own, so you can tag the real estate right. to collect. That's fine. If they already have that right, then the language yeah. doesn't matter. Um, if they don't, they weren't conferring a right to somebody that is going to protest the process then and, and delay the But you understand that in, a, in an action like that, the basis for them going to court is because they have some injury, mm -hmm. not because they have a wild hair. You know what I mean? Okay, yes, I do. So I do. Not, every, not everybody who just has wild hair can go to the, to the district court and say, I, you know, okay. I have a problem. Okay. Not only do they have to have an injury, they have to have made that injury a matter of record okay. for the county commission. Okay. And that may be the answer, and that's fine. Right? <coughs> they already have the right, and they have to do what he just said, and okay. I'm good with that. Are you done beating us up? I'm done. Thank you. All right. Thanks, thanks. thanks a lot. You guys. Thank you. Very very much. Much. Very Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? We're done.